death murder, the darkness that fascinates the mind and speaks loudest to our souls? Why is it that we find the end of the human experience so captivating, and the tales of those who deal such fates so riveting? I'm Billy Baker. Welcome to the Spooky Crew. The small town of Moriarty, New Mexico, a speck of dust on the map along old Route 66. What is now a dying town was once thriving. Mercy Francis was a baby abandoned on the doorstep of St. Anthony's Orphanage in Albuquerque. But in time, she aged out of the system and took to the road well-traveled, trying in vain to hitchhike to parts warmer. It was 1942 when her long foot journey led her here to Moriarty, where a traveling circus was setting up for their first show. For a town that was burning with excitement for something other than news of the war to help them forget their windswept existence. The Barkham Brothers Family Circus was the cure. A cure with just one hitch. They needed a clown. The star of the circus, Bismarck the Surly Clown, lived up to his name. A six-foot-six German man made all the more drunken and surlier by the war overseas. It wasn't uncommon to find him on stage. Spewing vomit, smoking cigars, making rude remarks to the women in attendance before fighting an angry man or two. Still, the worst of his fury was aimed at his assistant, the junior clown in waiting, of which only a handful lasted for more than one show, and only the lucky ones left voluntarily. His last assistant took, and I quote, a beat down so tragic that it reached the highest magnitude of heaven's wrath. Santa Fe, New Mexican. Bismarck needed an assistant, and Mercy needed room and board. Their fate, it would seem, was matched up by the devil himself. And honestly, with Satan as your Cupid, what in God's green garden could go wrong? With the Barkham brothers in town for two weeks, their junior Harlequin was in need of a stage name. Mercy didn't think on it long. Touchstone, she said, for I will set the standard to which all other clowns will be tested. And tested she was, thrown into the fire, so they say. Her first performance was full of awkward dancing, pratfalls that were in fact real falls, hidden behind laughs and smiles to hide the pain. She scrambled to put together a uniform, often changing her attire between performances. Anything to get a laugh, a smile, to prove to herself that she was worth something after all. You can't juggle, you can't dance, you can't take a fall without a fracture, but you can take embarrassment like no other. Bismarck drunkenly shouted as he spit a mouthful of whiskey in her face before tossing his cigar on her head, igniting her hat and wig, which she tore off to the cheers of the crowd, lighting her eyes with the fire of praise. It was late October, and the circus was set to leave on November 1st, All Saints Day. The town had been overtaken by the Halloween season. Decorations lined the yards, jack-o'-lanterns on the sidewalks, and orange lights in the windows. And the source of it all was Mercy Francis. Touchstone the Clown was a hit performing every night, taking pies to the face, even whole cakes some nights, and on one particularly harrowing stage she had a carved pumpkin placed on her head to dance about, while Bismarck drank and tossed darts at it, sticking one in her back before picking up a baseball bat and cracking the pumpkin, while simultaneously knocking Touchstone senseless. The crowd loved it, loved her, and she could often be seen on the moonlit streets, practicing her cartwheels and awkward dancing, all by her lonesome. For the grand Halloween performance, Bismarck lifted Touchstone by her ankles, holding her upside down over a barrel of pickle brine, dunking her head in it while she sang the ABC song. If she lost her place, she had to start the whole thing all over. The spectacle ended with Bismarck dropping Mercy head first into the barrel tipping it over to spill onto the stage, only for Bismarck to slip and fall himself, then stand and proceed to stomp and kick Touchstone. 
The junior clown cowered and tried to guard, uttering the final words of her last performance. Mercy! Mercy! Bismarck, ever the showman, said. You really are French, aren't you? A standing ovation was given as Mercy limped off the stage to fall asleep in her cot. Within the hour, Mary Lou Redding returned home. She was 12 and was noticeably without her nine-year-old brother, Justin. When questioned by her parents, she said, the clown in the pumpkin patch took him to the big top. I told him not to go. Her father, Brian, and her uncle, Dave, went out searching. First, they confronted Bismarck, who quickly pointed them to Touchstone. And perhaps it was his charisma, or maybe it was the fact that he towered over them but they took his word and grabbed mercy. This we all know from Mary Lou herself, from the police report she filed the very next day, a report that it seems was disregarded. They tied Touchstone to a post in the barn and hit her again and again. I told them it wasn't her, that it was the man that took Justin, but they wouldn't listen. I screamed and screamed that it wasn't her, as my mom dragged me away. She also noted what may have been the last words Touchstone the Clown would ever say. Please, sir, have mercy on me. The Barkham brothers moved on, taking Bismarck with them and leaving in their wake two missing persons cases that remain unsolved to this day. After that, things went on as usual in Moriarty. That is, until the very next All Hallows' Eve, which brought the sudden death of Brian Redding from a heart attack, and Dave Redding, who appeared to have been eaten by a pack of voracious coyotes. The years moved fast, and within a decade, everyone forgot about Touchstone the Clown. That is until Mercy Francis returned. As the legend goes, on the coldest October nights, and only the coldest mind you. Touchstone the rises from the pumpkin patch to walk the streets of Moriarty, to spirit away the bad men who are riddled with addiction and have a penchant for mistreating women. Years will go by with no sighting of mercy, but when she returns, more than one resident suffers a grisly fate. In 1954, she was seen by five separate eyewitnesses, including one police officer dancing down Route 66 and practicing her Pratt Falls and cartwheels in the park. Four victims were found that year, all mutilated beyond recognition. And so it went. Every few years, Mercy came home. In 1993, she was recorded on a VHS camera miming in front of the restaurant El Comedor de Anayas. In the 70s, she was photographed sitting at the gazebo and singing in a ditch. In the year 2000, she was pictured hitchhiking on old Route 66. Every sighting of Touchstone, the clown was followed by brutal murder scenes. From the staggering 16 dead at the 1988 bachelor party slaughter to the six murders in 2016, which were preceded by multiple cell phone pictures and videos from over a dozen different people, it would appear that Mercy Francis is still around and she offers none of the mercy she ever found in life. With that said, if you happen to find yourself in Moriarty on a cold October night, well, hopefully you're not the type of guy Touchstone the Clown is looking for. I'm Billy Baker. Stay safe out there.